Taco Dibitz, Director of Collections of the Rijksmuseum. I've been working here for about 10 years. I came to work here because the museum was closing for a major renovation and I thought that's a once in a lifetime experience. I'm responsible for the collections. Most museums have a person who's responsible for the collections and in large museums that's a director which means that I have an accountability, a role in accountability to the government. But of course the biggest accountability is to the public and how do we present the collection to the public, how do we preserve it for the next generations and how do we take care that everybody in the world knows about the Rijksmuseum and about the beautiful treasures it houses. I think that it changed a lot the way we do research. It changed a lot how we um, photograph the collections. Um, the power of the image you can use for um, taking care that you can enter in each home everywhere around the world, but also now on each mobile device everywhere around the world with, the, with our treasures and with the images that we send. And all those images, each one of them houses a story and we try to tell that story as well with the images um, and people on the internet. And the great thing about what you now have is Androids or iPads is that you can touch the collection, something you can't do in a museum. You can touch it and really go under its skin and then look at the smallest details um, through the internet. The fun part of being a director of collections is impossible to say because I think it's all fun. I mean it's every day when in the Netherlands you cycle, so every day when I cycle to work I think it's, I'm incredibly lucky because you work with the most beautiful material, the most beautiful collection, you work with people who, are all, who all love their job. So it's, I never have a problem with having to motivate people or try to make people work harder. No, they, w they all work hard, they all love what they do. You sometimes have to protect them for themselves, but that's, um, but that's also part. I, 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 I like working with people and I'm curious about people always what drives them and I love the art. The most memorable project for me was the reinventing of a national museum, of the Rijksmuseum. It wasn't just a renovation, but we reinvented the entire museum, the way you present the collection, um, the way we work, the entire organization structure has changed. And after 10 years of work on that, that was, um, that's the most memorable. Another project I absolutely love was Rijks Studio, where we, most museums, have a huge database and these databases all over the world are growing with images but it's how do you communicate these images especially because there's such a quantity to your public and how do you take care that people remember them because we're confronted with so many images a day that right studio where you can play with the images yourself um, makes you remember them and i think that that was after the the, the physical museum the virtual museum which we build on Rijks Studio is the, um, was, an, it was a fantastic project. I think the most challenging part of working in the field is the objects are amazing, people see them, but to make people realize that they, have a f that they still play an important role in our society of today, that they're still relevant, that there are things that we have to be extremely careful with and that we, ha we have a duty in our generation to preserve them for the next generation, but also to, to bring up a generation that knows how to read them. The main skill, but that's in life, but the main skill is love. <laughs> in a sense, a love for the objects, a love for the collection, a curiosity for people you know, and a passion for art. I think that's what is really key because you're in a way you're in between the public on the one hand and the objects on the other hand and we are in between those so those two are as important. To work in a museum or to work in the creative industries 
you have to have a specialization. So don't become too much of a generalist. Keep your eyes open around your specialization, but specialize in something. I always also like to point people who, are, who have a specialization, even though I might appoint them in a different field. I think it's very important to um, have a real skill in the sense that you, can, you, you have a lot of studies that are very general and I think that it's important for the arts but also I think in other fields that you have a skill that you're, for example, I specialized on 16th century Italian drawings. The other thing is I do think that within the museum world, a, and that's also something that I was taught by the auction house, that you have to um, have a, uh, you don't have to be specialized on, but you do have to have an acumen for um, the commercial world and to work in a commercial environment is I think a very good training because that's also part of a museum. I mean, a museum is also a business. I don't think the public should experience it as a business, but you also have to run it like a business. Um, so I think that that's an important part as well. My very first job was making an exhibition on a draftsman, a Swiss draftsman in Italy, and he made a grand tour. And I followed that grand tour with a rental car and a backpack when I was 20 um, through the south of Italy, speaking a bit of Italian, but I made photographs of the places where he had been. And I learned a lot of how people get extremely excited when I would show them these drawings and I would go to farmers and say, this is where this is the drawing of your farm where you've lived over 200 years ago, people get extremely excited when art relates to them and when they can recognize something in it. So that was exciting to be able to communicate with hundreds of different types of people because everywhere you came one time somebody would live in a palace, the other time he would live in a, in a shed. Um, that you can communicate with people and that you go outside your comfort zone. That you, you, you dare to, to be also to be innovative, that you dare to go to places where you usually wouldn't go. And that adventure, I think, is what the adventure of um, working in a museum and working with artists. How did I become a director of collections? Well, I never planned to be one. If there's an inner drive where you do what you absolutely love to do and what you work with art with which you absolutely love to work, then um, it kind of goes by itself. I started doing projects. Um, I did projects for the Rijksmuseum, then I worked at the Getty for a year, and then I joined Christie's in London. Auction houses are a great place to develop your eye, to train, mainly to distinguish quality because you have to look at all old masters. That there is no end to it, that you can always continue learning and I think that that's key, that you, you will never be finished and you want, if you, you, you should always want to learn, your curiosity is a driving, a driving force. Um, career planning I would never do because life is always, always goes in different ways. Um, you can plan everything but then things happen that make you go another way or you get an, an offer that you can't refuse and um, just do what you really love to do. To respect the artworks and let them tell their story um, is, is key to attract. Uh, public and for work I would say as I said I think do do really what you love to do because otherwise you'll never be successful in it <laughs>